So, presenters, if you want to have somebody up here as your slide flipper, that's great. Or if you want to, you all know how to advance PowerPoint. Good evening, everybody. My name is Mark Wise. I'm Chief of the Judges Panel this year for, for Research and Development. I'm ably joined this year by Dr. Chuck Johnston, the President of the Glenn Research Center, and Bob Justice of Justice Consulting, correct? Uh, Bob Justice at Bob Justice Consulting? Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> now, I'm a former law right? In 1972, I placed B in uh, R&D. So, I placed second in B division. That's what I mean. so, Uncredentialed. Completely uncredentialed. So, a uh, quick review of the rules. Uh, you've all seen the schedule. It's, it's, it's out on the board. Um, per the rules, Competitors are actually allotted more time than we give them. You're allotted 15 minutes to present and then 10 minutes for Q&A. We're operating under the assumption that the blocks won't last that long. If, if we do start going over time, the time will come out of that 10 minute break we built in at 8.30 to 8.40. The idea being keeping reasonably on schedule and not having this go, not having things go beyond what we can reasonably expect at bedtime even for A for free and A and B division competitors. Uh, so, so each contestant has up to 15 minutes to present. They don't have to take the whole 15 minutes, of course. If you're getting close, we can give you a two-minute warning. I will wag it two fingers. That means wrap it up, please. I mean, come to your conclusion. The judges get first crack at the questions for the Q&A period. We'll each ask. We reserve the right. We, we, may, we may pump the questions and say we'll come back to ours later, but we, we have the first right to refuse questions. After that, time permitting, we open it up to the floor. Okay. Uh, we will, the three judges at the, close of, at the close of presentations this evening, we will repair to the judging room and come up with our rankings. We will hold those close. Don't even come by and ask us. You will learn at the banquet along with everybody else. And absent any, oh, uh, a couple of other points about the tech. If your voice really, really, really will not carry, we can set you up with a microphone, but unless you've used microphones before, I tend to think the solution is worse than the problem. So unless, unless you really, really have a voice that doesn't carry, let's ignore that. However, every seat does have a microphone in front of it. You press the green button, it goes live. There's nothing we can do to suppress those. Please don't. <laughs> um, and especially if you're carrying a cell phone that you haven't silenced, keep those away from the microphones. We can, uh, I'm told there can be interference issues. I, I haven't verified that. I left my phone upstairs. Uh, any questions before we get underway? All right, Zach, let's open up your presentation. I use the six inch parachute for the payload. 
Here's the results I found. When I didn't use a piston, it went up about to 2,000 feet to 200 feet. But when I use, but when I started to use a piston, there's a sudden jump. Like seriously, guys, even a baby piston makes a big difference than not using a piston at all. And when I used a 24 inch piston, it was a slightly better than the 18 inch piston. And when I and when I t and when I flew the third. The 30 inch piston, it went like really high. And so I, I thought the higher the pistons, the, well, the longer the pistons, the better results. So I made, well, I already explained this. So when I flew the longer pistons, the, it, the results sort of leveled off. And the same goes, the same story goes with the average ejection altitude. My conclusions. Use, use a piston because based on the ejection altitude results, even an 18 inch or a 24 inch piston performed 80% better than not using a piston at all. If you use a 36 inch piston, 36 or 42 inch piston, your, your flights will increase about 102%. On average, a 30 inch and 48 inch perform the best of, at about 109%. 30 inch piston is a better choice between 30 inch and 48 inch because we can get similar results. The, the 30, 30 inch piston seems to be more reliable the, it's easier to make, the piston costs less, and it's not as fragile. The pist and the pistons are easier to, to prep on a launch pad for little people like me. That is, that is my R&D report. Any questions? Three flights yes. with that good data. 
Did you find that mostly with with any given length, any given piston length, were the three flights generally close to each other, or did you occasionally have some sort of outlier that did really, really well or really, really badly that that, that might uh, might have moved up your data? Well, I had to refly some flights. I remember. I, I can't remember why you had to reflights. Because either the um, Either the, pist either the clip snagged on the piston, the um, altimeter didn't reset, or um, I forgot the first one. Sorry. You said clip snagged, altimeter didn't reset, or popped off early. That's right. Yeah. Popped off. popped off early. So if you've got data at all, they tend to be they tend to be close enough to close to be together within a given piston length. Is is, is what I'm hearing you say? Yes. Questions from the audience? We have some time. Yes. So I, I enjoyed the presentation. My, my question is, in competition, rockets slip off pistons and clips snag on, on pistons. That's one of the things that happens. So why did you choose to exclude those events when making your recommendation to use a piston? Well, I do lots of pistons r and so I decided, like one, I, did, I picked a random one, and that was like a payloader. So. No, but my my question is, is that al altimeters aside, because we're not using altimeters, things like the clip snagging happen in the competitions. Things like the uh, models coming off the pistons either early or late, versus the those things happen. And I'm wondering why you chose to exclude those in making the recommendation to use a pistol. Well, those, those were some risks that could happen when you use a pistol. Exactly. Any other questions? So a lot of people have done R&D projects before using pistons in general. I don't know if anyone's done one before, particularly in this event. But I'm wondering what your project, like, what makes it unique or different compared to other projects? Well, you, you can use it in different ways, but it depends on the weight of the model that you use. So... Said the bumbling bro the bumbling brother said in their R and D the heavy the heaviest models work best for the uh, um, pistons. Any other? Uh, where did you get your tubing from? What what company is did you buy it from? The, the tubing you use for the pistons, where did that come from? Well, it was like, it came from like a hobby, like a hobby shop or like, yeah, a hobby shop. Yes. Do your wires run up through the middle of the piston so you can hook it up with the igniter or do you hook them up from the outside? Well, I tape, I tape it to the end of the I tape it to the end of the rod so it wouldn't snag or it wouldn't go up with the piston. So outside? Outside or inside? Um, is, is that inside. outside or inside? Inside. Outside or inside the piston? The clips. Oh. I don't think you understand your question. Do the, do the clips attach at the, right here or do they come up through the tube? They come up. Oh, no. Explain how you look at your igniter is what he's asking. Okay, so. So, I'm on. So, I have this, like, and then, um, I bend the clips down, or I bend the, um, the two, well, I bend the two igniter. Down and then, um, and then I go up, but it's not in the piston. 
Okay. Any other questions?